Hello, everyone. Um, Gordon Causey. Live right now. It's uh, Tuesday night, and that's the 20th of September. And it's right now 11.03 p.m. in my little corner of eastern Ontario, so that's eastern time. I uh, want to talk about something that is going to be somewhat difficult for me um, because it's about uh, Aylmer's Church of God Restoration, uh, a church I've gathered at, um, I've gathered with that assembly 10, 12, somewhere around a dozen times. Um, and it's a church I had never honestly uh, heard of prior to March of 2020. I might have heard of it previously, but it never it never resonated. It was background noise. Uh, but it definitely became more than just forgettable background noise in uh, March of 2020. March of 2020, of course, was when the pandemic was declared and churches all around, closed their doors, um, and uh, which I disagreed with. I thought that if churches wanted to gather, they should gather. Of course, that was strictly verboten uh, at that time and for a long time afterwards. And uh, the Church of God Restoration in Aylmer uh, came onto a lot of radar screens because of the fact that uh, on one of the first, if not probably the first Sunday, when churches were ordered, ordered to be closed, sometime around March 18th of 2020, uh, I don't know the specific Sunday, but at any rate, what they did in Aylmer was they set up an outdoor platform uh, with a short-range FM broadcaster, and they invited their congregants, the members of their church, to drive into the parking lot to remain in their vehicles with the windows shut, and then they um, broadcast the service via a short range FM transmitter. So the people sitting in their cars would tune their radio to uh, a specific station, 92.3 or whatever it was. I haven't, I don't know what the station was. It's the same setup they use in uh, drive-in theaters now. And the police were there harassing them, taking down license plate numbers in subsequent weeks. I believe they uh, physically tried to block or physically block the, um, the entrance, the driveway into the church parking lot. And that rankled me. Uh, you know, if indeed there's a deadly pathogen, a deadly virus spreading around while well, you've got a bunch of family groups sitting in cars behind closed windows certainly a lot safer than a Costco, Walmart, or Home Depot, or any of the other so-called essential uh, spaces that were allowed to be open. And I disagreed with their scans. Now, theirs was not the only church that uh, defied or that uh, pushed back against these orders, the orders of the state. Uh, there were others. There was... Uh, Trinity Bible Chapel, which is just outside Waterloo, Ontario, uh, right near the town of St. Jacob's. Uh, and uh, their pastor's name is Jacob Riome. And uh, there are a number of pastors in Ontario who came to the fore and made public stances with respect to uh, the church being essential and the need that the church must gather and things of this nature. Uh, the ones that immediately come to mind, there's Dr. Aaron Rock. He's in Windsor. I believe the name of this church is Harvest. Uh, again, the aforementioned Jacob Riome Trinity Bible Chapel in um, Kitchener-Waterloo area, St. Jacob's. There was also uh, Hill City Baptist in Peterborough, pastored by a gentleman by the name of Alex uh, Klusterman. Uh, and another pastor, I don't know the name of the pastor in the other church, but it's Westmount Bible Chapel. And uh, that church also. Uh, and a number, uh, a few others. Those are the ones that immediately come to mind. Uh, that's Ontario. 
uh, elsewhere in Canada, of course, everyone likely knows about, if you're listening to me, um, Art Pulowski in uh, Calgary. Uh, he's the one who famously on the uh, Passover service uh, screamed at health officials to get out of his church, called them Nazis and Gestapo, etc. And he got quite a lot of coverage on even the American media like Fox News. I think he was even interviewed by Tucker Carlson. Uh, there was James Coates. Uh, he was the first pastor, as, as far as I uh, recall, the first pastor to be imprisoned uh, for um, not closing the doors of his church. Uh, and then there's um, oh, a gentleman as well from Calgary. I should have written these down before I started my video. Uh, uh, and I, I'm, I'm forgetting his name, but he was also thrown in jail. He has like five, six, seven kids, and they uh, came and handcuffed him and everything in front of his children. Heinous. And so, and, and amongst this group was also uh, Pastor Henry Hildebrand of the Church of God Restoration in Aylmer. And Henry was something of uh, a very prominent public figure in terms of movements uh, about you know, pushing back against the health orders. He was a central figure uh, figure during the Ottawa trucker convoy protest, uh, leading worship service, inter interceding between police and protesters, praying, and uh, got quite a, quite a bit of, uh, it was quite prominent, probably one of, if in terms of Ontario, one of the most public figures in the, what I'll call the faith space. And I finally got a chance to go and visit with that congregation in June of 2021. And then, as I say, I've been several times since. And I always listened to the preaching and I never had any issue with any of the preaching. I always found it soundly biblically based. So I was somewhat surprised, consternated, to use a big word. Uh, about six months ago, I think it was sometime around February, February, March, when Pastor Jacob Riome of Trinity Bible Chapel in um, Kitchener-Waterloo, he issued a public pronouncement uh, at a church service, and it was shared to that church's YouTube channel here uh, on their Facebook page. Uh, I'd have to go back and check, but if memory serves, they had thousands and probably tens of thousands of views, certainly far more than I ever get, and that's fine. Uh, and he, Jacob Riom was basically distancing himself as far as he could from the Church of God Restoration and from Henry. He said he wanted nothing to do with that group. And he further stated that they would bring shame to the broader church. They would bring shame to the church and that they were a bigger threat than I believe he said, Justin Trudeau. And I was, uh, it, it, caught, it bothered me uh, because a lot of it, I thought it seemed to be based on hearsay. Uh, and it seemed to be based on videos that were being circulated that were taking things out of context. And it bothered me. And so I did my own video uh, voicing my support. I had no animus toward Pastor Riom. Uh, I thought there was a doctrinal difference of opinion vis-a-vis -vis what is called um, cessationism and uh, continualism, you know, do, do, th th are, are things like prophecy, uh, did they stop or did they continue, and things of that nature. But since then, this past Sunday, not this Sunday just past, but Sunday, September 11th, there was a service in Aylmer, which I listened to, and I heard some preaching that bothered me and bothered me to such an extent that I took, uh, I took the time to, I wanted to write down word for word what was being preached. And so I played the video backward, forward, backward, forward, to, to get it down as close to word for word as I could. 
the preaching wasn't being done by Henry himself. They had a guest pastor or a guest preacher by the name of Thomas Tosviga. And he, uh, he, he, on the, on, on the YouTube channel, you'll see it, it lists him as prophet Thomas Tosviga. And he was talking about the book of Jonah, uh, where um, Jonah goes to N Nineveh. And I remember I had to check on it because I always, you learn something one way and you, sometimes it's the wrong way. I always said Nivana, not Ninava. I always said Nivana. You know, and you say them close enough together, and they sound the same anyway. But he was very clearly saying Nineveh. And then I went to check, is that right? Is it Nineveh? I thought it was Nivana. And as it turned out, he was right. It is uh, Nineveh. And uh, he was uh, preaching on, um, well, it was a long, one element of his sermon was about Jonah and about uh, Jonah going to the Ninevites and, you know, saying yet 40 days and you will be, God will, you know, uh, render judgment on you and your city will be destroyed. And at that, the king of Nin Nineveh got off his throne and he uh, got off his throne, and then he uh, put on sackcloth and covered himself and sat in ashes and instructed every man, woman, and child to do the same. He spoke about it at length, uh, about what happened uh, as accounted for in the book of Jonah in the Bible. And then this is what he said, and again, I took this down as close to word for word. There was only one word I wasn't sure on, well, I wasn't sure at one point whether he said on or in. Either way, that's the only one I wasn't 100% sure on. But this is what I wrote down, uh, quoting him directly. That's the first thing. And again, I'll just preamble it a little more. Sorry. Uh, he's talking about the, uh, the king of Nineveh having gotten off his throne and putting on sackcloth and sitting and covering himself in ashes. So, quote, that's the first thing that leads to a true repentance, is a dethroning of yourself. There's more people today, there's more people in this room that need to get off their throne. You say, what will possibly stand between me and my health? What will possibly come between me and my full restoration? It all depends on how quickly you step off your throne and recognize that there is one throne of God on the earth and its headquarters is in Greenville, Ohio. The king of Nineveh got off of his throne and that's where I ended the quote. I wanted to give uh, as complete a, and I wanted to give context around what he was saying. The issue I have is at the end where it said, uh, recognize that there is one throne of God uh, on the earth. He might have said in the earth. Uh, I couldn't quite make out whether it was on the earth or in the earth. But either way, I don't. I, whichever preposition it was, I don't think it is of great significance. That you know that the the throne. There's a throne of God, and that throne of God is in Greenville, Ohio, and that's what I had an issue with. Uh, and the reason I have an issue with it is my reading of scripture says that God's throne is in heaven and that the earth is its footstool. And so um, I had an, an issue with that during that um, sermon, that uh, live stream service. They also uh, had a number of the mostly younger members of the, of the church offering up confessions, and their confessions all centered around, and I'm editorializing, but they uh, centered around these young people paying less than full respect to the apostles of the Church of God Restoration, and ha not wanting to go to what they refer to as camp meeting in Greenville, Ohio. And they were 
to my eyes, genuinely sorrowful, uh, very emotional, crying over the fact that uh, it was like they felt their eternal salvation was dependent upon bowing down to the apostles and to recognizing that uh, headquarters, that was a, that's a word that was frequently used, how, how, how important headquarters is. And I do have an issue with it. Um, the chief apostle of the Church of God Restoration is a gentleman by the name of D. Ray Tinsman, Donald Ray Tinsman. He go, goes more often by Ray or Brother Ray. And I actually did meet the man. I went to the church, the church in Aylmer had uh, what I refer to as a revival meeting in um, October of last year in the week leading up to Canadian Thanksgiving. And Ray came up from Ohio or Indiana, wherever it is he lives. And uh, he preached. Uh, we went uh, on a, we, I heard the preaching on uh, Friday evening and then two services on Saturday, and all three were pre preached by Ray. And they were, they're available still, I believe, on the, I've listened to them subsequent. They're on the Church of God Restoration's uh, Facebook page for Aylmer's Church of God Restoration, the church that Henry pastors. And I had no issue with Ray's preaching whatsoever. Uh, he preached on the Mark of the Beast. That was the central theme of all his uh, preaching. And you know, he addressed some of the issues that people have with the church and that, you know, how people say, oh, you're brainwashing people. And then this is one of the uh, points that uh, some of the videos that circulate where they take something out of context and use it as a proof. And they said, you're, you're brainwashing people. And Ray said, yeah, well, they're brainwashed too brainwashed by CNN, by Fox News. Thank God Jesus washed my brain. Puts it in a completely different light. But this idea of, uh, you know, to access Jesus, you have to first go through the Church of God restoration. You first have to recognize um, Ray as, uh, you know, this D. Ray Tinsman as somewhat being God's representative on the earth. Uh, rankle, rankles me because um, that was in large part the whole impetus behind the Reformation. When Martin Luther nailed his thesis up to the cathedral doors because that kind of uh, power establishment is, I view it as very uh, unscriptural, unbiblical. I am the way and the truth and the light. No one gets to the Father but through me. But first you have to go through this individual. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I do not believe that. <clears throat> and nothing, uh, none of the preaching I ever heard from Henry or the preaching I heard from Ray Tinsman himself uh, a, uh, pretty much a year ago now, none of it, none of the preaching I heard spoke in those terms, but during the, the past two Sundays, uh, uh, and certainly two Sundays ago, when it was Thomas Tasfiga doing the preaching, interestingly, when that service went up onto their YouTube channel, it was two hours and 10 minutes long. You can go now and look at it, and everything I just quoted is gone. And all the confessions of all the young people equally are gone. The service has been edited. Why? Why? Put, leave it all up. Why did you edit those comments out? Why isn't the, the services are regularly streamed to YouTube, but that one's not? I don't know if it was originally and if it was removed or if they didn't put it up to begin with. Um, so 
Uh, and uh, I, I feel compelled somewhat to make this video because even though I obviously don't have the same footprint as a Trinity Bible Chapel, Jacob Riom, or any of the other individuals I, I listed, the video I did with uh, after Pastor Riom had said, I want nothing more to do with them, you know, uh, distancing himself as much as possible, totally, you know, wanting no, nothing to do with them whatsoever. Uh, the video that I did in rebuttal, it got 175, I think 175 views, which is nothing. But there might be a dozen, there might be five, there might be two or three people who use that as justification and say, well, this guy, he seems pretty sharp. I'm an idiot. You know, um, when it comes to uh, wisdom, everything gets measured against this. And compared to this, I'm a speck. Uh, I did want to read one passage from Scripture, and it's from Luke chapter 14. And um, this is what it says. This is Jesus speaking, uh, and it's a parable. I'll start in chapter, or I'll start chapter 14, Gospel of Luke. I'll start with verse 7. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he marked how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, quote, when you are invited by anyone to a marriage feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest a more eminent man than you be invited by him. And he would be invited, and he who invited you both will come and say to you, give place to this man, ma'am, and then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may see, he may say to you, friend, go up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For every man who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exhausted. It's late. Uh, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. The word of the Lord. Uh, discernment is needed in these times, and putting all your faith, hope. I, I've spoken numerous times about the fact that anyone looking for a to a political leader to a Donald Trump, a Pierre Polyev, or to the legal system looking to for a legal solution to these challenging times that we're living in. Hello, Lasik TV, or Isaac TV. It's difficult for me to read. Uh, anyone looking for a legal solution is going to be disappointed. Anyone looking to you know a prominent figure like a Robert Malone or a P Dr. Peter Jacobson or countless other health officials or other prominent public figures and thinking, no, oh, they're going to send the whole thing crashing down, uh, are going to be disappointed. The, the, there is only one in whom victory is assured, and that one is Jesus Christ. It's not D. Ray Tinsman. It's not Henry Hildebrand. It's not me. It's not anyone. What's your opinion on the Twitch drama going on right now? I don't know anything about a Twitch drama at all. I don't watch. Uh, I don't watch television. Uh, I don't. Uh, uh, I do consume news, but the only news I consume is that which I seek out. I'm curious about what's being reported on, with respect to monkeypox or COVID or something. I will search out articles on it and try and get all. Uh, it, the full spectrum of what's being put out. I don't, I haven't watched network news show. Now you've given me something to look for, Twitch drama. No idea what, what you're referring to, Isaac TV. But anyway, that's my video. So I'm not going, I know that I've spoken to people and I've said, go to Elmer, go to Elmer. 
and uh, it'll be, and I've said it'll be food for the soul, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I've been very supportive. I've also been something of a defender uh, when they've come under attack. And I do think in some cases the attacks are misguided. Um, uh, Henry, I had, I genuinely like the man. He is, and I never heard him speak in these terms about Greenville, Ohio, and about D. Ray Tinsman until this past Sunday after Thomas Das Vegas uh, preaching on Saturday the 11th. Then the subsequent Sunday, which I guess would be the 18th, Henry was back in the pulpit and he put up a picture of the 12 apostles of the Church of God restoration, of which he is one. Uh, and uh, spoke glowingly. And I, I don't necessarily have an issue with, you know, if, if, some, if someone points you, a friend of mine, Scott, got my feet back on the Christian path back around to the year 2006, 2007, after I'd wandered for a long time. And so am I grateful to Scott for having pointed me back in the direction? Absolutely, 100%, but I don't worship him, and I don't think my salvation is dependent upon him, and I don't think I need to go to him. I've got everything right here, but I am grateful to Scott for telling, reminding me that you need to get back, you need to get your feet, feet back on the path. So I'll leave you, I'll leave you there, short, short-ish video for me, still a little too long, but I'm verbose, I'm wordy. God bless, and uh, we'll see what the coming days, month, weeks, months bring. I'll probably do a video in a couple days. I know.